Good morning all, and today I'm playing around with this. It's a microchip PIC 10F 322 evaluation board. Uh, the chip itself is this tiny little SOT 23 6 pin, which is about the same size as the tip of this pencil. So given that it's only got uh, six pins, it's not going to have a lot of I.O. In fact, the two center pins are VCC and ground. And the four pins on the corners are the four I.O. pins. Uh, one of them can only be an input because it's also the programming pin and the master clear pin. But the other three can be inputs or outputs. And on this uh, little development board, we've got two LEDs. So they'll be attached to two outputs. We've got a pot that would normally be attached to an analog input. And we've got a switch and that's connected through to the uh, pin that can only be an input. Uh, this little leaflet comes with it and you can see that the chip there um, has its pins connected through to this six pin header. The four IOs are connected to this header and then they jump across and uh, go down to the four peripherals, the two LEDs, the switch and the pot. You can cut the tracks between these two sets of links and then bridge them across and that's exactly what I've done here. I've uh, cut the tracks, put the uh, header pins in and put little jumper links across. So let's have a go at uh, programming this little microcontroller and for that I'm going to need a programmer. So I'm going to use Microchips Pick Kit 3 which is a USB programmer. It's got a mini USB there. Uh, this just plugs in directly to the evaluation board. This is a standard Microchip 6 pin ICSP header. And so that plugs into my PC via USB. Other way up. And there we go. So the programming environment is MPLAB X IDE. I'm just waiting for that to load up now. So this is the programming environment and I've started writing a flashing LED program in a PIC assembly language, but I'm not gonna use the conventional method of set the LED pin high, go through a big long delay, set the LED low and go through that delay again. I'm going to use one of the peripherals. So I'm also going to need the uh, 10F322 data sheet. Uh, this is 200 pages long, so there's a fair bit to read. But the peripheral I want to use to make the LED flash on and off is this. It's the numerically controlled oscillator. So here's a simplified block diagram of the numerically controlled oscillator, the NCO. And what this really is, is just an adder and it adds a 16-bit register to a 20-bit accumulator. And when the 20-bit accumulator overflows, we get a little pulse coming down this overflow line. Now, if this 16-bit uh, increment register were set to all ones, it would take 16 additions to fill the 20-bit uh, register. If I set this to just one right at the lowest end here, so all 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, one at the end, it will actually take a million, approximately, additions to overflow the 20-bit accumulator because two to the power of 20 is just over a million. Now that sounds like a lot of additions to get this thing to overflow, but I'm gonna be driving it from this clock, the HF internal oscillator, which runs at 16 megahertz. So with 16 million pulses per second coming in, and 1 million pulses to overflow, this thing is going to overflow 16 times a second, 16 hertz. Now, will we see a 16 hertz oscillation on the LED? Well, it may be a bit fast, but further down is this. It's a flip-flop, which is going to further subdivide that frequency from 16 hertz to 8 hertz. And if I feed that through to the output pin, we'll certainly see an oscillation of 8 hertz on that LED. So here's my code, which did take quite a while to get to, to work. Um, include just brings in a file which has all these uh, register names so that the uh, assembler will know which registers I'm referring to. Config sets the fuses. Uh, the defaults are for an external oscillator, which is a bit silly. So I've had to set uh, the fuse for internal oscillator. That's the 16 meg oscillator, although it is divided down and the default for the clock for the CPU is actually eight megs. 
Um, the watchdog timer needs to be turned off. The default is that it's turned on. And I also need to turn off low voltage programming. So org sets the start address of the object code, so that's zero. Now this instruction here, um, I've got zeros in the low three bits. That's because I want to set uh, bits zero, one, and two of the IO port to outputs. So this is just um, like a pin mode on the Arduino. It's called TRIZ, so we load that number into TRIZ A. And then we load four numbers into the NCO, the numerically controlled oscillator registers. Now here are the increment high and low values. And as I said, I'm going to load it with all zeros and a one right at the end. This is a 16 bit value. So we load the high byte first, then the low byte. Then you load uh, some uh, parameters to set what the clock source is for the NCO. And then there's a control uh, register where you switch it on, enable the output, and so on. So these are the high frequency internal oscillator, 16 megahertz. I've got to select that from one of four different sources. I've got to set my uh, high and low bytes for the increment to go into the uh, numerically controlled oscillators adder. I then need to uh, select between a 50% mark space ratio or this other mechanism, which you can have different mark space ratios. I need to select the polarity of the output. That doesn't really matter with a flashing LED. I need to enable the output, the TRIZ I've already done, and that then comes out on the NCO pin. So let's build this project, um, assemble the code into object code, and program it into the chip. So I'll press that. Now, I know this program's working, but there is just a small problem that the NCO, the numerically controlled oscillator, actually comes out on pin RA2, so that's bit two of the I.O. port. And I happen to know that the two LEDs are on RA0 and RA1, so one of them I've got to shift over to RA2, and I'm going to do that by adjusting those links, those header links, and put a little jumper wire on there. So let's take out that link and that link, and then jumper RA2 from the chip over to this pin which has an LED on it. And there goes the red LED flashing at eight hertz, exactly as predicted. Now it's a little bit fast to count, so is there any way I can slow that down? Well, I've got the lowest possible incrementing value in here, uh, all zeros with a one at the lowest bit. So the only way I could slow this down is by having a lower frequency coming in uh, here. Now the high frequency internal oscillator is 16 megahertz. F OSC is actually eight megahertz. So if I selected that instead, I'd get uh, half the speed. So I actually get four hertz coming out of the back end here. However, I don't want to do that just for the moment and I'll show you why. In my source code below the four, uh, well, effectively four instructions which load hexadecimal values into the NCO registers, Below that, just off the screen, is that, sleep. So after the microcontroller sets these registers to these values, it actually completely shuts down. So the microcontroller part of this chip is completely asleep. Nothing is operating, it's just not running at all. The LED is flashing because the high frequency internal oscillator is still operating and the numerically controlled oscillator hardware is still functioning. The peripherals are still awake. The CPU is asleep. Now here's the block diagram of the clock module in the microcontroller. Here's the 16 megs high frequency internal oscillator. And you might think it's an odd thing to do to keep this running when the CPU is in sleep because this is gonna use a lot of power. The low frequency oscillator, 31 kilohertz, does continue running because it uses so little power it doesn't really matter. The high frequency oscillator would normally shut down but if you've allocated it to either the NCO or one of the other, other peripherals called the CWG, the complementary waveform generator, the chip actually leaves it running because you've shown your intention to have it continue running. Now, what about this green LED? Is there some way I can make that do something uh, while the CPU is still also asleep? Well, the red LED is or was connected through the jumper links to RA0. I've now re-jumpered it with this white wire to RA2. The green LED is currently still jumpered across to RA1. Let's take a look at that. 
Well, as luck would have it, the configurable logic cell, the CLC, actually goes out to RA1. So if we can make the CLC do something, we can get the green LED to do something. Now, if you were to just read the data sheet, the CLC appears hugely complicated. Uh, it's a simple block of logic, but the setup registers for setting it all up are massively complicated. But they have made it a bit easy, easier by supplying a little application. And this is it. And it's a pictorial representation of the um, configurable logic cell. We know that this output here if I enable the logic cell, which is with this button here, we know that the output goes out to the green LED. That's already uh, pre-wired. Now, what about these inputs? Let's take a look at what the input sources are. Well, look, one of them is the NCO. So I can feed the numerically controlled oscillator output into here. Now, we know that's running at 8 hertz. Uh, if I link it through to this first gate, but don't link anything else, and now I'm going to choose the AND gate because it makes this uh, a bit easier to understand. I need three ones on these inputs for this to act as a straight pass through. So I'm going to invert the output of these three gates. And that should be the NCO fed directly through to the output of the logic cell. Now it did take me a while to work out that uh, unconnected inputs actually act as logic zero. If you've played with logic, you probably remember that uh, disconnected inputs tend to pull high, but not in this case. These are zeros, so these outputs will all be ones, so this will function uh, as predicted. So the last thing uh, down the bottom there is to enable the output of the logic cell, and then I need to select uh, assembly language, because that's what I'm working in, copy and show, and the instructions that I need to add into my code are simply written up here. So let's paste those uh, bits of code in. Uh, there they are. So it's written these, well, there are 16, 17, in fact, with the bank cell. Uh, we don't need the bank cell for this chip because it only has one bank, but all the code uh, elements are in. So the logic cell should be now enabled and uh, set to work with the NCO as an input. And the result is this. Uh, the red LED is being driven by the numerically controlled oscillator directly from output RA2, flashing at 8 hertz. The green LED is being, uh, well, the source is the output from the numerically controlled oscillator being put through the logic cell. And now the green LED is also flashing at 8 hertz in exact uh, sympathy with the red one. And bear in mind that while all this is happening, the microcontroller section of this chip is still asleep. So let's have some uh, fun with this configurable logic cell. Uh, I'm going to invert the output uh, here right at the back of the logic cell so that the signal is inverted when it goes to the green LED. Um, we should be able to predict what happens there. So I'll take, uh, I'll copy and show that, take the new code and copy that into my program. And the result of that is that the uh, red and green LEDs, I'm not sure if you can see this, but they're actually flashing now in opposition to each other, uh, complementary outputs. And what about slowing down the flashing of the green LED? Well, there's actually a JK flip-flop here, which I can use instead of that AND gate. Now, I happen to, I've just looked up that uh, J and K both need to be high to make this a uh, frequency divider. Reset is active high, so we don't want to reset it, so let's set that low. So that now should take this NCO signal, which is coming through onto the clock input, and act as a frequency divider and then pass that through. We don't really need to invert that anymore. Pass that through to the green LED. Let's copy and show and see what that does. And yes, that has had the desired effect. The red LED is still flashing at 8 hertz. The green LED is now flashing at 4 hertz. And uh, once again, with all this going on, the CPU is still sleeping. Now there is another peripheral called the complementary waveform generator. I've not really studied this one but it does look from the block diagram like you need uh, an oscillator source. You also need an input source. It looks like you can take either the NCO uh, as an input or the logic cell as an input. So since the NCO is already going into the logic cell, we could take the output of the logic cell and pass that into the complementary waveform generator if we felt so inclined. That would then produce um, 
complementary outputs and feed those actually to RA0 and RA1. So that would drive the two LEDs in opposition to each other. But I'm not going to get into this now. It does look very complicated and I've not, uh, I've not played with that one yet. So that's a little play with the microchip uh, PIC 10F322, this tiny little chip that's the size of the tip of a pencil, um, which has a full microcontroller inside, but also these peripherals which will run completely independently of the microcontroller. The microcontroller is currently completely asleep. It ran briefly for a few microseconds to set all this up, and now it's shut down. Um, I think it's a rather extraordinary chip. Cheerio.